Okay, I'm going to call the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for this evening to order. Uh, prior to the start of the meeting, I am going to read a document from the governor relative to uh, virtual meetings. In accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A and 20, relating to the 2020 novel coronavirus outbreak emergency, the July of the public meeting tonight of the Zoning Board of Appeals will be open to the public. However, the public and all applicants are encouraged to participate remotely. The board that we have tonight is member Stephen Bernard, member Craig Pina, member Steve Lianus, Member Chief Mike Williams, uh, Kenneth Galligan, the chair, uh, Mr. James Pluff, who is our zoning enforcement officer and the building inspector and also the clerk for the board. And our recording secretary tonight is Beth Lacombe. Uh, there will be one case that the chairman is going to recuse himself from. And in his stead, we will have alternate member Bob Pelagi. Prior to the start of the meeting tonight, uh, we will, in accordance with our rules and regulations for the Zoning Board of Appeal, on an annual basis, we elect a chairperson for the board. So tonight where we have our complete board here, I am going to entertain uh, an election for a chairperson for the next uh, year. I am going to open it up for nominations for an election for a chairperson. Do I hear anyone make a motion for a chairperson? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. I can't. Uh, I nominate uh, uh, Ken Galligan for a uh, uh, chair. Okay, I have the nomination of uh, Kenneth Galligan as chair. Do I hear any other nominations? I'd like to close nominations, Mr. Chairman. Okay, a motion has been made to close nominations. Will the clerk please call the roll? And each member will name the member that they are voting for for chairperson. Mr. Pina. Mr. Pina. Ken Galligan. Chief Williams. Kenneth Galligan. Mr. Lanus. Kenneth Galligan. Mr. Bernard. Kenneth Galligan. Mr. Galligan. Kenneth Galligan. Mr. Ga um, Mr. Chair, there's a five to zero for Mr. Galligan. Okay, the vote is five in the affirmative for Member Galligan, so the uh, current chairman will be on board for another year. Secondly, we will now elect a vice chairperson for the zoning board. I will open up nominations for a second vice chairperson. Vice chairperson. Mr. Chairman. Who is it? Oh, Chief Williams. I would like to see the matter. Mr. Bernard, is there any other nominations? I would make a motion to close nominations. Motion has been made to close nominations. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Pina. Stephen Bernard. Uh, Stephen Bernard. Chief Williams. Stephen Bernard. Mr. Galligan. Stephen Bernard. Mr. Lanus. Stephen Bernard. Mr. Bernard. Stephen Bernard. Mr. Chair, that's five to nothing for Mr. Bernard. 
Five affirmative votes for Mr. Bernard. Mr. Bernard is elected as vice chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals for the coming year. I would ask anyone that's in the room if you'll shut off your electronic devices, your telephones, you can shut them off or put them on silence. As a matter of right, anyone having a petition scheduled to be heard before the board tonight may withdraw the petition prior to the start of the meeting. We have two petitions that have been withdrawn prior to the start of tonight's hearing. Three cases that have been withdrawn. The first case that has been withdrawn that will not be heard tonight will be re-advertised, Mr. Clark, next month. Yes, be September meeting. Petition number 20-56, the petition of Fenton Associates LLC. 135 Elliott Street, Brockley, and 2711, subsection 3, to construct three residential units requiring relief from frontage, width, and side setback standards on lot B and relief for the side yard setback for lot C in an R2 zone located at 135 Elliott Street. That petition will not be heard this evening. The second case that has been withdrawn is petition number 20-59, the petition of Robert Jordan, 1325 Belmont Street, Brockton, Mass, for a variance from Article 4, Section 2725, to change the existing commercial contractor use to seafood packaging commercial use in an R1C zone located at 555 Plain Street. That case will not be heard tonight. It will be rescheduled for September. The next petition, 20-64, the petition of Brad Cartwright, manager, 845 Washington Street, Braintree, Mass, for a variance from Article 3, Section 27-24, Subsection 2A, for relief from the city's setback for vegetative screening when abutting a park in a C5 zone located at 609 and 627 Pleasant Street. That case will be rescheduled for next month and it will not be heard this evening. Is there anyone else that wants to withdraw prior to the start of the hearing? Chair, I see nobody. Nobody? Everybody's good? When a case is called, the petitioner will come before the board present the case to the board, and upon completion of the presentation of the case, I will open it up to questions from the board. Any board member can ask the petitioner any question that they may have relative to the information that has been brought forth by the petitioner. Following that, I will then open it up to public discussion. I will ask for anyone that is in favor to come forward and state their reasons why they are in favor. When that petition, when that section is closed, I will then open it up for anyone who may want to speak in opposition. Following that, I will close that part of the hearing and I will then open it up to any public officials that may want to speak on the issue. Following that, I will close that part of the hearing and I will then open it up for deliberations from the board. At this point, the, the board will deliberate among themselves as to what they want to do as far as voting for this petition. At that point, a board member will call for a vote. The vote will be taken and in order for a petition to pass. With all five members tonight, if all five members vote in the affirmative, the petition will be granted. If it's a four to one vote, four members in favor, one against, the petition will pass. If it's a three to two vote, whether it's three in favor or two in favor, the petition will fail and it will not pass. At that point, 
we will move on to the next hearing. This evening, we have three hearings before us. And in tonight's hearings, the the chairman is going to recuse himself from the first petition that is coming before the board. In the place of the chairman, uh, alternate member Bob Pelagi will stand in. So the first case this evening is case number 20-57, a petition of Michael Heichel, 1325 Belmont Street, Brockton, Mass, for a variance from Article 3, Section 2729, for relief from the city's permitted uses to construct a two-family residence in a C2 zone located at plot 11 slash zero Cobb Avenue, also known as 11 Lexington. Plug in there, you can plug in. You'll be all right? Let's see if I'm able to do that. Y'all be ready. Chief has already read the uh, petition. Petition of uh, Michael Heiko, 20-57. Uh, at this time, we'd like to hear from uh, the petitioners. Thank you. Uh, Chris Vail on ahead. behalf of uh, the petitioner, Michael Heiko. Uh, with me is Scott Ferrier. Uh, this is a petition to the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, seeking a variance to construct a uh, multifamily house in the city of Brockton on a vacant developable lot. Uh, in order to do so, Mr. Heiko is seeking a variance under Article 3, Section 2729, allowing this use of the property. Uh, some particular facts about uh, Plot 11, which is located on Zero Cobb Ave or, Lex or 11 Lexington Street, uh, that the lot is located in a C2 zone and currently sits vacant, surrounded uh, by residential three-family structures. Uh, Mr. Heiko wants to construct one two-family residential property on this vacant lot. Uh, the assessor's database classified this property as developable vacant land sitting on 0.17 acres of land. Uh, this plot is similar in size, if not greater, than the abutting neighbors uh, who all have three-family structures. Uh, although plot 11 is in a C2 zone, uh, this area is primarily used for residential purposes. Uh, the property's location does have unique size and shape as shown on the plan uh, and would be consistent with the other lots in the, in the neighborhood by being similar in size as well as having similar, uh, similar frontage. Uh, the hardship as uh, previously stated in this present case is that plot 11 uh, does have a very unique size and shape as well as uh, the fact that the, the plot is in a commercial zone uh, that is primarily used for three family residential purposes. Uh, Mr. Heichel is not looking to use it as a three family, but a multifamily, uh, which would provide a lot more green space to the neighborhood and uh, look nice. So uh, on behalf of Mr. Heichel, we are asking uh, that you grant uh, his petition. Thank you, was that it? Yes. At this time, I've asked for uh, questions from the board members. Unmute yourself. Questions from the board? Yeah. 
Thank okay, you. sorry. Uh, good evening, Council. I had a question for you. Um, you're showing the owner of record uh, on the plan is, he, is Mr. Gilmetti, and then you've got the owner on, uh, on the application and the owner's cert certificate is Mr. Heichel. Who is the owner of record at this time? As of June, uh, Mr. Heichel has purchased the property. Okay. All right, so he's, he's purchased. And um, um, I had one more question. The, so looking at the looking at the house plans there, uh, there's a little bit of feedback here. It's a, it's a little difficult, but you've got so it's a two family, but your but your first floor apartment is is two bedrooms, and then your second floor is a four bedroom, and it looks like you're providing uh, parking that's, that's uh, meets the the zoning ordinance, which is two parking spaces per dwelling unit, but. Uh, is there any concern that uh, uh, with your four bedroom unit there that you're, you're going to be uh, going to be, have a problem with because that street is that street is marked uh, no parking on the street there. Sorry, Mr. Pelagi, you've been in that, counselor. Yeah, you went in and out uh, to address some of the concerns of what I, I believe you were asking. It is a, a townhouse style, uh, which is going up and down second and third floor. Uh, and we do have parking out in the front, which uh, will be enough uh, for uh, a two family. Which would fit two cars per unit. Yes, you've got, you've got two parking spaces there. You've got two... Yeah, but um, my concern was that you one of the units is a four bedroom unit, and it's what is the possibility that you're going to have more than two two vehicles on that second and third floor? I'm sorry, what? It, we're hoping that it, it's going to be more of a, a family uh, structure with little children and families living there, uh, which we provided four parking spots for. Uh, Two for each uh, unit for the multifamily. Okay, because my only concern is because I believe this, the street is labeled no park. If I may, Mr. Pelagi, I, I think there is ample room on either side of the property. If you know, other questions from the board? Oh, he's, he's answering my question. He was answering the question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If, if, the, if the homeowner on, on the first floor with the four bedrooms wanted to uh, enlarge your driveway, they certainly could stretch it uh, beyond the front of the building and, and add another 15 feet to the driveway to get a third car if needed. So there is, uh, because the lot has enough width to it, it's 17 feet from each sideline, they, they would be able to increase the driveway if they needed. You mean by, by lengthening the driveway? Exactly. But I know with one of our main goals was to keep green space available there. Uh, and that's why we left it for two spots. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Other questions from the board? Is my voice being heard? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you're asking for a variance. Uh, variance requires a, a hardship. You may have stated, but would you restate the hardship? With, uh, uh, clearly stating what the hardship is. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what we're saying that the main hardship is due to the the unique size and shape, as well as uh, the fact that the zone is the hardship. That uh, it is a commercial zone. Uh, however, it is primarily used as three families, which is shown on the plans. Uh, all the abutters are residential purposes. Uh, I, I don't see that it would fit into the neighborhood by putting a commercial uh, uh, property there and making it commercial, making it more in tune to the neighborhood would make more sense to make it residential. Thank you. Other questions from the board members? 
hearing none, I'll close that portion of the of the meeting. Uh, at this time, uh, <coughs> is there anyone open the public uh, portion of the meeting? Is there anyone here that wants to speak uh, in favor? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Councillor Neary here, who are you? Thank Can you hear me? Go right ahead. Okay, I, I, I want to speak in favor of it. Um, I've been to the location a couple of times, uh, one with uh, Michael Heichel and, and one with uh, myself to take a, a look again uh, the other evening. Um, I, I don't foresee that there was a problem here. Um, I know it comes, um, you know, close to where the Shaw Center and Stadium is located and everything, but to be truthful with you, uh, I was um, surprised when I really looked at the vacant lot and, and saw the size that it, that it is. And um, I know a lot of times when we're doing these types of projects, the one thing that becomes a concern is parking up or traffic. And I don't think there's traffic we have to worry about and, and not parking. I I firmly believe I think it's a global situation and I think it would uh, just add to, um, you know, the other uh, uh, buildings that are there, the other properties that are there. Um, and and I, uh, I totally speak in favor um, of this, um, you know, um, building to be to be put there. And, um, and, I, and I think Michael will, will do whatever has to be done to make sure that uh, he's, he's doing it in, in the, the rules and regulations of the zoning board as he always has in, in any project that he has. So I feel confident uh, in speaking in, in favor of this uh, um, petition this evening. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in favor? If not, I'll close that portion of the, of the hearing. Uh, is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition? Uh, hearing none, we'll close that portion of, of, of the hearing. At this time, we'll, we'll hear from any uh, public officials that would like to speak. Are there any public officials? Hearing none, we'll close that portion of the meeting. And now we'll go into a deliberation or deliberation. Is that, is that correct? I, I can't quite hear you. I'm going to say that you need a nomination or a, um, a motion. You need a motion in a second. Uh, to go into deliberation? Yes. No, we're calling for a deliberation from the board at this point. Any, 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 any comments or deliberations from the board? Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, um, I, I personally, I think this is a this is a good use for this site. I don't think there's any commercial applications that this site could be used for, given given the size of the lot and requirements for parking. I don't see how this lot could be used for anything other than residential, and it fits within the neighborhood. And this this there is room for parking to expand if uh, there is a need for more parking at the location. There's a chair motion to grant. Second. Mr. Pina. Yes. yes. Chief Williams. Yes. Yes. Mr. Lanis. Yes. Mr. Pelagi. Yes. Yes. Mr. Bernard. Bernard. Yes. Yes. Mr. Bernard, uh, uh, Vice Chair, we have a five to zero vote in favor. Thank you, Board.
We are currently switching back to the chair. Switching back to the chair. Oh. She doesn't have to touch anything, and she just right there. It's like you shouldn't have to unless it tells you to. Okay. All right, the next petition is 20-57, the petition of Michael Heichel. We did that one. 2058, the petition of Wells Construction, LLC, 535 South Main Street, Randolph, Mass, for a variance from Article 3, Section 27-9, for relief from the city's frontage requirements to demolish the dilapidated house in order to construct a new single family home in an R1B zone located at 643 Pearl Street. Thank you, Chairman and members of the board. Chris Vale on behalf of the petitioner Wells Construction. Uh, the petitioner is seeking a variance under Article 3, Section 27-9 uh, in order to build a new single family home uh, which is located in an R1B zone. Uh, the relief is sought for the uh, front yard setback requirement. Uh, some particular facts in 2013, Wells Construction uh, purchased 643 Pearl Street, uh, which consists of 11,145 square feet. Uh, currently, the, uh, the existing house is dilapidated and requires a tremendous amount of work. Uh, the current owners have also received letters from the city of Brockton uh, from the law department requesting that they clean and fix the property uh, in which they are trying to do so now. Uh, in addition, uh, as you can see on part of the plans that part of the existing house is situated uh, within the layout of Almond Avenue, which uh, is a city owned street. The proposal of the project would consist of tearing down the existing house uh, and then constructing a brand new single family home. The house would consist of four bedrooms, a uh, wood frame and a driveway access uh, would be changed from Pearl Street to Almond Avenue. Uh, if the access came from Pearl Street, this house would meet all the uh, setback requirements. Uh, if Almond Avenue is considered the frontage, then a variance would be required. Uh, overall, the new plan would be a better situation rather than rehabbing the existing structure, uh, which is located uh, on the public way. Uh, it would also be aesthetically pleasing for the neighborhood in the city. Uh, so essentially, this hardship is that uh, this property uh, is extremely old. It's dilapidated. Uh, I know the city would like to see it cleaned up, and uh, we're trying to do so and position it that's not on a public way, but sits more appropriately uh, on the lot. And that's all, Chairman. That's it, okay. Any questions from the board? The question I had, I wanna make sure I heard this correctly. The new dwelling is going to face on Pearl Street, correct? 
Yes. And it's going to have an underground garage from Elman Avenue. That is garage. That is true. Well, I believe it's a concrete driveway that's going to be on the side. Okay, so will this house have a garage? I can just take a look. I don't know. I, I did attach. I can just uh, one second. Yes, it will have a garage. I'm sorry. So the, the way Elman Avenue goes down on the side, it led me to believe that there may be an underground garage from that side street or is it? It's I mean, it's a really ranch and so I do, yes, there will be, uh, it will be under the, uh, the foundation or the foundation that would go under where the garage would be. I did send uh, house plans uh, via email uh, in hopes that uh, you guys did receive them, but. Uh, okay, so the house is gonna be 28 by 50 with a garage under from Elman Avenue. Correct. Okay, and the house will face on Pearl Street. Yes. Very good. Any other questions from any members of the board? Everybody's good? I'm going to open it up for public discussion. Is there anyone that wants to speak in favor? We show no one so far. Okay, I'm gonna close that portion of the hearing. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in opposition? Chair, we have one here. Comments? Uh, <coughs> Mr. Chair, we have one that says, I am opposed to this, has been a property property since 2013, and they haven't done nothing to fix it in six years. The city has sent many notices without getting anything done. This is from Alice Kent, 601 Pearl Street, in Nevada. So is she opposed to the fact that they're going to tear this house down or replace it with a new one? Or she's opposed to the fact that nothing's been done with the existing host? Mr. Chair, there's nothing that indicates that answer. Okay, so I would hope that she understands that the plan here is to take that dilapidated house totally out of there and replace it with a brand new house. Okay, is that the only one? That is the only one. She has one comment that says they should fix the house there. Says what? They should fix the house there. They should fix the house that's there? That's okay. Right. Okay, very good. I'm going to close that portion of the hearing if there is no one else in opposition. Nobody? No other comments. Okay, I'm going to open it up for comments from any public officials. Anybody here want to speak uh, on this issue? Uh, any public officials? None? None. Okay, I'm going to close that portion of the hearing and now I am going to open it up for deliberations by the board. Any members of the board have any comments relative to this granting of this variance? Mr. Chair, I'd like to, uh, to make a comment that- Mr. Uh, Pino. The, the proposed plan is, is a vast improvement over what is there right now. Mr. And Chair, I'd like to, uh, to make the comment that uh, the, the proposed plan is, is a vast improvement over over what is there right now and, and will greatly enhance the neighborhood. Uh, making a dilapidated building that is actually on the right road with, and it's, it's not oversized as a, a raised ranch 
that will fit in very nicely with the neighborhood. Um, I, I, I don't see anything wrong with this, and I, I'm, I'm looking forward to see it replace the dilapidated building that's there right now. Okay, can you hear me now? Okay, good. Uh, and when I went to visit the site, the house that's there now uh, certainly appears as though that's probably well beyond repair. And uh, it would seem to me that this would be a vast improvement, not only to that location, but also to the neighborhood. So the house will face Pearl Street, the driveway will come in from Alman Avenue. Mr. Lanus. Okay. I'm very happy with the plan. Uh, the, the, the driveway is on uh, Almond Street, uh, Almond Ave, as opposed to on, on Pearl Street. Uh, as I drove, as I pulled into the driveway on, on Pearl Street today, backing out was taking like taking your life in your own hands. Uh, so that uh, reduces the, uh, the the risk of accident. Uh, by having the driveway on Almond Street. So I'm satisfied with the new plans. Does anyone want to make a motion? Motion to grant. Second. Motion has been made to grant and it has been seconded. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Pina. Yes. Chief Williams. Yes. Mr. Lanus. Yes. Mr. Bernard. Yes. yes. Chief Galligan. Yes. Uh, Chairman. Yes. 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 Mr. Chairman, that's a five to zero in affirmative. Yes. Okay, the vote is five in the affirmative, none in the negative. The petition is granted. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, the board. Thank you. All right, for the benefit of the board, this last case of this evening, we are running ahead of schedule. This one is scheduled to be just after seven, and it is currently about quarter off. Uh, will the clerk see if the petitioner is online and ready to go? Can you hear me? Sure they, are. they are ready to go? Yes, we are. Yes. Okay, the next petition is 20-61, the petition of 
Terrasol 702 North Montella Street, Brock Mass, for a retail cannabis business in a C2 zone located at 702 North Montella Street. Will the petitioner please identify yourself? Hi, I'm Ian Woods. Spell it. I-A-N, last name Woods, W-O-O-D-S. Okay. Okay, you can proceed with your presentation. Thank you. Good evening, members of the Zoning Board of Appeals. My name is Ian Woods. I am a Brocktonian and I am a social equity applicant. We are here for an application for a special permit under section 27-24.4, subsection 7B by Terrasol LLC, a Massachusetts limited liability company for a retail marijuana dispensary at 702 North Montello Street. I own a 60% interest in Terrasol LLC and my partner Milton N is another Brocktonian local business owner. His company has a 40% interest. We have secured funding from local banks and financial companies in order to fund the establishment of this business, including the renovation of the existing structure. Um, if I may, I'd like to sh um, share screen. Sure. It says I'm disabled. Can you, can everybody see it or? No, yeah, hold on. I can actually have um, my partner share it. I don't know if um, it's like a, privacy thing going on or something. Yeah, put it up. Are you uh, attempting to get that up on the screen? Yeah, because it wasn't allowing me to screen share, but my partner Milton, he's on right now. I'm just gonna he's gonna pull it up so you can you can see it. There we go. We got it. Okay, excellent. So, so is that the same as the plans that you submitted? Yes, sir. Okay. So um, as you can see, we're not proposing to do any alterations to the site. We will be enhancing the green space with a few low level heights of plantings um, regulated by the Cannabis Control Commission. Um, the only alterations to the exterior of the building will be the replacement of the current roll up garage door with an entrance. And we will be sealing up two windows. We, we're gonna replace the two current um, four by six signs with one two by four sign. With Terrasol, um, it's been a dream of myself. So we plan on staying with the company and staying in Brockton and reinvesting in Brockton. Um, we don't plan on going anywhere for the foreseeable future. Uh, if you can, um, uh, on page 31, if you wanna pull it up for them. The context map. Yep. 
So um, as you can see by the context map and the engineer's letters submitted, there are no schools or other retail establishments within the 500 feet of the property. Um, and because of the current pandemic um, COVID we're having right now, we, we, we developed an app um, that will be attached to our website so the client can review our virtual store and purchase right from the comfort of their home or even on the train, which is a walk's distance away. Um, and then they can come in and pick up the order contactless. Um, the Cannabis Control Commission um, regulations are very strict and no one is allowed into the building without first showing their identification, proving they are 21 years or older. Um, once they have entered the building through the secure vestibule, they will once again have to produce their ident identification to security. Then security will allow them into the retail area to produce, to purchase product or finalize their pre-ordered product. All pre-orders will be processed according to CCC standards, including having the customer complete the transaction at the secure pin pad at the contactless kiosk. We have prepared an odor control that is in your packet. It's on page 101. Um, I want to pull that up for them as well. So even though all products that we're going to be selling, um, they're, they're all pre-sealed by the supplier, the CCC requires this extra precaution. So we submitted that for you guys as well. And from here, I'm going to let my partner Milton take over um, and finish up the presentation. Hi, uh, this is Milton Naziopoulos. How's everyone doing tonight? We hear you. Okay, all right, great. So I'm a uh, business partner. Ask them to mute one of your machines. I'm also the owner of the property. Before you go too far, can you mute one of your machines? Uh, getting feedback. Yeah, feedback. It's this one. Oh, yeah. That one. All right, is that better? Much better. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, I'm basically I'm the owner of the property, and um, Ann's my business partner. I currently operate. Uh, three businesses from there, an electronics business and a hydroponic store. And uh, I wanted to show you our proposal and you know how customers would get in touch with us, how they would come to the store, uh, make their purchases, our parking plans, um, and our security plans. Uh, so I'd like to pull up that site plan again and share that. Uh, give me one second. Yeah. Did that come up yet? Yeah. Okay. Yep, we got it. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so basically, the way the industry has been going is um, a lot of people like throw out retail. I've been in the retail industry my whole life, and um, it evolves. And the way things are going now is like everybody wants to do things with apps and ordering online and things like that. They like the convenience of like just order something and then just go pick it up real quick. Um, so we actually developed an app um, to do that where people can sign up and they can order through the app and their order would be ready when they come. Um, basically, we are expecting uh, about 120 uh, customers a day. Um, some of them will be on foot uh, since we're a local store, we'll be servicing the local community and we'll be uh, 
you know, and obviously some people would be coming by car. Um, so with the 120 customers uh, a day, we're looking at four to eight customers during non-peak hours, uh, anywhere from seven to 14 during peak hours. Uh, so if you look through our parking, when uh, for those that are gonna drive here and pick up their orders, uh, they can come in and it works out to um, basically two parking spaces is all we need to accommodate even during peak hours. Um, and if you can see from the, the site plan here, we have five parking spots. Um, the people that order on, online or on the app, they will, um, <clears throat> they're generally here for three to five minutes. Uh, people who haven't pre-ordered uh, generally spend seven to 10 minutes in the store. And um, so basically when people show up at the store, let me pull, let me pull up the interior uh, design. Hold on one second. That come up on the screen? Okay. Um, yeah, we have it. Yeah, okay, great. Okay, so this. Um, so basically, customers would come, uh, come up to the door, and right at the door, there's, um, and I'll go over the whole security plan a little bit more in detail uh, after I explain how the customers come. So in order to gain access to the building, you can't come into the waiting room without presenting an ID. So right at the door, there's like a, like some of these other places, they all have a camera system and the customer would have to hold their ID right up to the camera. They would press the doorbell and that would verify that they're of age, you know, 21 years or older. At that point, we would buzz them in and they would, they would be coming into the vestibule in the uh, waiting area. Um, at that point, they'd be greeted by the security, um, which we have at the at this point here. And they would notify the security, they would give their ID and they'd be verified again. And then it would basically, security would say, are you, did you pre-order or are you ordering now? And if they pre-ordered, uh, you know, security would just check, check them back and see if the order's ready. Uh, and if the order's ready, the uh, person would get buzzed right in to the sales room where they, uh, they can pick up their order at one of the POS systems. And these orders are all done, like they're already prepaid. So we're trying to keep everything like a cashless based business. And that's a model that's being followed by all sorts of uh, retail customers. All right, I need to interrupt you for one minute. Okay. I got to interrupt you. Yes, go ahead. Okay. On the plans that were submitted, there was no orientation for north, south, east, or west. So when you talk about coming into the main entrance, that would be in the waiting area? Correct. And where... The door, there's two doors that come into the waiting area. Can you orientate the board where those doors are located in relation to the parking lot? The, the parking lot is um, on the south side, which is right here. There's the three parking spaces on this side. And the back of the building is over here where the other two parking spots are. Okay, that would be the side where the dumpster is located. Okay, so there's two doors coming in, one on the side where the dumpster is, and one facing south, which would face Ames Street. One facing south, facing Ames Street, correct. And that would that is going to be our exit door. So we're going to have uh, one entrance and one exit door. Both off of the waiting room area? Correct. Okay. All right, go ahead. Thank you. Okay, and so basically... Uh, the individual, they have their orders ready. They come up to the, uh, the POS system. They would 
show their ID one more time, their order would be given to them, and then they would proceed to uh, leave, the, leave the, the store. Um, so these doors, uh, so basically the customers don't have access to any um, of the other areas. Those are all done by key cards for employees only. Um, so like the back doors, the security, the prep area, all that, the, all the doors work off of a, like a, a key pass. So you have to have the, uh, you know, like swipe a card in order to gain access to it. And that also includes the break room area over here. So there's no access through here uh, from the sales room to the break room uh, for customers. Uh, that's just for employees only. So that door that we see on the break room is strictly an employees only door? Correct, yeah, yeah. We don't have any, you know, we're not gonna give a public bathrooms or anything like that. That's strictly for employees. And the door that's right here on the front that faces uh, Montello Street um, towards the east, that's an emergency exit door. So that's, that's, there's no entry being able to be gained from the outside and it'll only open from the inside in case of an emergency. And it also will incorporate an alarm. So if it was open, like if there was an emergency or something, it would sound an alarm. So, the, so we don't anticipate a lot of traffic based on our uh, assessment of how many customers will be coming um, and the way the industry is right now, it's constantly evolving. Uh, it's not like, uh, you know, last year when the stores first opened in Massachusetts, you know, you've seen lines and stuff out the door. Um, the new places that open now, you don't see that happening. And what we're doing is because most of our stuff is going to be pre-orders on would be through the apps and online, people are gonna basically, they're gonna have an appointment to come and uh, pick up their products. And uh, so that'll, uh, should, that'll alleviate anything uh, as far as traffic goes. And we did do a traffic study. Um, you have a copy of that. And basically what they found was that this business here will actually have less traffic than the common businesses now that are there. And um, during the first month, um, or as long as that's needed, we will have the soft opening as well, which um, I, I, I think uh, pretty much every other business has done that. Um, so they'd be orders uh, done online with uh, an appointment to come by and pick them up. And as we see like how things evolve and uh, people come in, then we can start opening up to like walk-ins and, and things like that, you know, as needed. Um, so let me move on to... Can I ask one question while we're right there? Yeah. You mentioned during the first month, many of the places that have come before us have told us that they are going to work in conjunction with the Brockton police about possibly having a detailed police officer to monitor the traffic that would be coming and going on this location. Are you anticipating doing that? Uh, if we need it, then yeah, we would definitely have that. Um, you know, we did bring our plans to the police department. They were reviewed. Uh, so that's something that we're discussing with them. And um, if, if there's a need for it, even if it's, you know, whether it's a, a month or two months or whatever, we'll, we'll do, uh, do that. But I don't anticipate that it would be necessary, but it is available for us to do it. So in your conversation with the police, is there an understanding that if there is a problem there, you are aware that they would have to put a detail there for some period of time? You, Correct. You've, yeah. you've already talked to the police about that? Yep. Very good. Thank you. So let's see, let me move on to another screen here. Give me one second.
Oh, yeah. oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, so this is. We know it went back. Oh, it went back. All right. Mm -hmm. Is that plan coming up? You're looking for pass. Yeah, it's on page John number one. All right, so you want to control plans in the packet, uh, but basically, you know, all our products that we buy uh, from our distributors or the uh, grow facilities, they are already pre-packaged. Uh, they're sealed packages for individual use and they're all barcoded. So basically everything seals. We're not processing any marijuana or anything like that. So we don't anticipate there's no odors or anything because everything's sealed. But even though everything's sealed, just in case, you know, maybe somebody drops a bag and lets it open or something like that, um, we do have uh, the engineering work done to do odor control. And it would scrub basically scrub the air in there so it wouldn't be a nuisance um to the neighborhood if something did happen uh, and uh that'll also comply with the ccc regulations and so let me pull up another screen there All right, so I'm not gonna go through the whole security plan because we have it and some of it shouldn't be public, uh, but this is the layout of the cameras, which people will be able to see anyway, so I can share this with you, but anticipate putting 30 cameras in the, uh, between the inside and the outside of the building. Each exterior wall of the building will have a camera to cover the entire side. So we'll get a 360 degree view of the exterior. And as well as that, there's also an additional one at each door. Um, and that also goes for the interior as well. There's, there's cameras on each door, so we know who's going where, who's coming. And the system that we're using for the security is actually pretty sophisticated because when, like our, when we're using and going from one section to another, or our employees go and say to the prep room or to the waste room and they have to run their key card through to buzz the door open, the system will actually record the date and time that that employee's key card is used. So not only do we have the cameras doing the, the date code on there and, and we know who's going where, but it also tells us who actually used the key card. So let's say I mean, let's say one of the employees. Uh, uh, we'll save that for ninety days. You know, was, um, anyway. So, and all the security measures, the video surveillance, and and everything will be saved for ninety days uh, for CCC regulations. Um, the building will have uh, two alarm systems. So there'll be a redundant one um, installed and monitored by a different company. So if anything was compromised uh, anywhere in the system, um, it would be a backup system. And it's also tied in with the uh, <clears throat> a wireless network. So even if there was no communication through like the, you know, how they monitor it through the internet and um, and stuff like that. Let's say if there was an accident down the street and a telephone pole came down, our cameras and our security would still work through a cellular network. So it's pretty immune to anything that could go wrong. And everything is all done on battery backup, standby power. And we have, uh, a dual redundant recording system. So the everything would be recorded on site <clears throat> and it will be also be recorded off site as well. Do you have 
cameras that will be watching all sides of the exterior of the building 24 seven? Yes, yes, there's uh, a camera on every side of the building. It's gonna monitor the whole 360 degrees of the building. And there'll be extra cameras uh, concentrated just on the doorways themselves. So there's actually uh, seven cameras on the exterior of the building. Now, the, um, when we have the deliveries, uh, we plan on, oops, I just lost my screen. I'm sorry, I just lost my screen. All right, so when we have deliveries, uh, we expect to have deliveries once a week, uh, possibly twice a week. Um, it'd be done at random times. And we would be, the deliveries would be done through the companies that do the deliveries. Um, and from what I understand, they have unmarked cars, like nobody really knows what's in there. It's just like a, a regular looking car. And we would know beforehand <coughs> to, uh, that they'll be arriving. So we would actually clear out uh, the parking space number five. We would reserve that. Um, once they call us and, and give us a, a time. So if they call us and they say, we'll be there in 15 minutes, we're gonna make sure that the parking spot is available. We'll have somebody out here to greet them. And the, the uh, delivery vehicle would pull into parking space number five, where the loading door is, um, the, can you see that? This, this is the rear of the building, the west facing side. Um, so that's the existing door that's still there. And then this would be the loading door. So the loading door would be literally right next to where the car would park uh, to offload. Um, the, the delivery vehicles already have two people delivering. They're in constant contact with the uh, business where the delivery is coming from. And they're also in contact with us. And we'll also have our manager there to greet them. They would be, uh, let's see. The products will be delivered. I'm trying to pull up a screen here to show you. Just give me one second. Oh, there it is. So the delivery is going to come in. This is uh, parking space five. The delivery would come in here with the uh, a manager and the delivery personnel. <clears throat> These other doors are, are closed off. There's no entry there. The delivery would come in and then this door would be closed. So it'd be secure. And then at that point, this door going into the prep room uh, would be opened by the key pass uh, from the manager. So there's always gonna be a manager there uh, to oversee these uh, deliveries and anything else. And um, it's brought into the prep area and then the door is secured again. And then um, we basically, we, the delivery is taken out of, <clears throat> they, usually they would be delivered with just plain totes that, you know, have like a secure lock on them and a GPS and things like that. And they would be brought into the prep area where they'd be unloaded and we have scanned all the packages that are in there. Because everything that we're gonna get is all pre-packaged. It's all like seed to sale. Like they can track the inventory all the way back to the original grower, the original seed that it came from. And we'll just scan everything, make sure all the weights add up and our orders there. Um, I mean, it's pretty much like any other retail business. I, I, I've been in the retail industry for 25 years and it's just, you know, you order inventory, you have to check the inventory when it comes in and make sure everything's there. Um, if there's any discrepancies, then we have to, <clears throat> you know, lock down and we have to make plans to, um, 
there's paperwork that we do to notify the supplier that, hey, you know, this is, you know, we ordered 20 of these, but only 19 are here. So now where did we go? So then um, that would be something that we could deal with there. So the orders have to be verified that we got what, uh, what we so ordered. So a lot of these things that you're talking about are regulated by the state, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes, this is, uh, all this stuff is regulated by the CCC. So it's, it's pretty much these are things that we have to do anyway. Um, I think we go a little bit above what they needed, um, but that's you know it's it's just you know it's just a way to keep it more secure. And I mean, this is kind of how I've operated my businesses um, when I get a delivery. Um, you know, they just come in, you just verify the deliveries and stuff, and they put in. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going to happen up on the second floor? Uh, second floor is uh, basically most of the second floor is going to be occupied by its its uh, currently a mezzanine storage area. Most of it's going to be where the HVAC equipment will be. Uh, the computer center will be there, which will be we have uh, uh, servers that will basically run our entire business and the main um, camera system. And so you're telling us that whatever is up on the second floor is related to the business on the first floor? Correct. There will not be a separate business operating out of the second floor? No, this is the only business that I'll be operating in. Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, so basically it gives us uh, only managers and the owners would have access to up there. Uh, it's basically to change the filters and the HVAC systems uh or to maintenance the uh, camera systems and the battery backup systems for the uh the security yes steve uh, you're fully, you're fully operational. How, many, how many employees are in the building at any one time i don't think he's on when you're fully operational, how many employees uh, are in the building at any one time? Uh, could you repeat that question? Because it was, it was cut off a little bit. Were you asking about the employees? How many employees would be there? How many employees do you have? And okay. How many will be? How many will be? Um, uh, working at any one time uh well that's what's nice about the setup that we have is the <clears throat> it doesn't require a lot of employees uh so we anticipate four people do you, do you and, anticipate that you'll have three or four people there at all times yeah there would be a security and where, where, uh, where are they uh, where's the designated market uh we have secured off-site parking for the employees uh which is uh, but, which is walking distance from there. And uh, you have off, would you repeat that? You said you have offsite parking for the employees? Yeah, we have offsite parking uh, secured for the employees. So generally, uh, during uh, non peak hours, there would be three employees there. And uh, during peak hours, there would be four. Uh, during a delivery, uh, we would have four employees there, uh, just to make sure that we have extra hands to uh, work the delivery and check it, and then still have the um, er everything else. Uh, are you are you including your security as, as in the employee in the employee count? Yes. So if you have four 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 people, the uh, one or two of them would be security and, and remainder would be operational? Correct. Um, you know, in the first month of opening, uh, we we're gonna have a parking attendant as well, just to see how the parking is going. And, you know, and if it, like I said, if it's an issue, we can have some detail uh, done by the Brockton police. And, uh, you know, we just basically keep in touch with them and make sure that's not an issue. Um, we are proposing that when 
uh, customers that do come by car when they leave, they take the, a right turn out of the parking lot. And um, so it just makes the flow a little bit easier if it, if it, if it matters. But I, I think the amount of traffic that I get there, like right now with the COVID-19, you know, there's not a lot. The, my store's not open pretty much. And um, so, but if you came like in December or January during my peak busy times with the current business that was there, you'd see there was a lot of traffic and with the traffic study, they actually found that there'd be less traffic and less cars coming with this uh, business, with the cannabis business. Uh, but we're still proposing that people just take a right turn when they leave the parking lot. Yeah, in the, in the, uh, in the early part of your presentation, you stated you stated that, and I, and I agree, uh, that uh, the grand openings at, at many of these cannabis uh, uh, facilities are, are not as large as they were initially. Correct, yeah. Uh, and and uh, uh, with, with has reduced the, uh, the, the size of the crowd initial open. Uh, what, what, what should you take uh, from, from cannabis uh, companies? To, I'm sorry, Steve, to interrupt. I, I can't understand what you what you were saying. It's breaking up. It's breaking up the whole time. Did you hear that? Yeah, there's a lot of back here. Yeah. All right. Could you repeat that? Okay, I'll, I'll try it. <laughs> Yeah, I can't hear you. Is it just us? Is it is it just us that can't hear him? Was it? No. Yeah. No. Nobody can hear that person well at all. If they could please start again. Technical difficulty with that. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, we, we got a problem with one of our units here. Steve, if you could ask the question, I'll repeat the question. In the earlier part of the presentation, you stated that the grand openings of cannabis have been reduced in a long long lines. And COVID has probably impacted the grand openings. What is it that differentiates you from other cannabis stores from other driving factors that, that will help you to sustain your objections? What will sustain the what, what is it? What will sustain his traffic projections? Okay, what he's concerned about is traditionally, I guess, when these stores have opened, there has been quite a traffic situation uh, that obviously mitigates itself at some point. What is your concern about the sustaining of this traffic relative to the parking that you have? I think you mentioned that if there was a situation, you had some off-street, off-site parking, and yes. you were also going to employ a police officer in conjunction with the police chief when it's necessary. Is that how you answering that question yes correct and, and not only that but the um with the soft opening where we wouldn't just fully open to the public it would be more like appointments only you know like you have to make you have to go on the app or the website or at least call us and say hey you know i want to make an appointment i want to come in and so we would have appointments set up in the beginning 
which uh, I've seen the some of the the most recent uh, marijuana businesses that opened. They did that, and it was very successful. There was everything ran smoothly, no traffic, no lines, things like that. And that's the model that I, I think everybody's starting to use now is the soft opening with appointments. And okay, all right, very good. Did you hear that, Steve? Thank you very much. Okay, that answered his question. That was very good. Thank you. Uh, have you finished your presentation? Uh, um, I will, could you screen share again? A share screen? Uh, you have to accept it again. The reason I'm asking that is I'm going to open it up to questions from the board. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear what you said. Okay, what I'm going to do is if you have pretty much finished your presentation, I'm going to open it up for any questions from the board. No, I wanted to show um, screen share um, a couple of documents. Okay. Okay, so yeah, there's um, a couple letters of, of support, support as well as a petition. Um, so as you can see here, Tina Cardozo, city councilor, um, is in support. Um, we have a letter from Janine Texera, who's also support, uh, Dr. Resident, um, as well as 33 handwritten signatures of Rockland residents that I've walked around and collected, as well as 260 other signatures um, online on the online petition on change.org. Um, the petition was submitted to Magnet Ridges as well as the application. We have that last list as part of your presentation. And actually I have several documents that I have in hand here that I'm going to read that have come in uh, for tonight's meeting. Okay. Thank you. All right, I'm going to open it up for any questions from any of the board members. Any board members have any questions? We do have a host agreement. Yes, sir. That's part of the package. We have that. And one other thing that has not been mentioned is the hours of operation. You're allowed eight to eight. Yes, we will be open from eight to eight. And I will tell you that in all other uh, applicants that have come before us, this board has been holding favorably to the eight to eight. Yes. 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So I just want you to know that if this is granted, that most likely will be a stipulation that from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., you could be open. After 8 p.m., the business has to be closed. You can't be receiving any deliveries or anything after 8 o'clock at night. Yes, sir. Okay, good. So... A question that I had relative to parking, you've answered some of my questions. One of them was the deliveries, and you're expecting one, possibly two deliveries per week. Is that correct? Correct. And when you know those deliveries are coming, you are going to make that space available so it's a secured area for the deliveries. Correct. Yeah. And you have secured off-site location for parking for at least your employees. Yes. Yeah. I do want to make sure that you fully understand that on North Montello Street and Ames Street, there is absolutely or well, virtually no on-street parking allowed. Yeah, yeah, we know that. Yeah, uh, you're in a, a very small plot and it's really confined by areas that don't have much parking. So the parking is going to be critical, which is going to be your responsibility. And quite frankly, if people can't get in and out of there, they're gonna go someplace else. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So there's a lot yeah. hanging on, on you yeah, to took, make sure that works. We took the parking pretty serious. And then, and that's why we have looked into doing the soft open ends and the app based stuff. So people's orders would be ready. And I did a lot of research on, you know, how many customers we expect per hour. So um, thank you very much. Okay, I, I will just comment that you did put together a very complete package. Yes. 
It's, it's a, a very good package that you put together explaining everything. And on the checklist that we have, we have checked off just, I've checked off everything that you need. So any other questions from the board? Everybody? Steve, question. Oh, I'm sorry, Steve, Mr. Leanus. Uh, the second thing that we have here shows the doctor. You got a mute. Uh, the site plan we have here shows a dumpster. I noticed on your site plan that you were showing didn't have a dumpster. I was wondering what the plan was for the trash. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was supposed to uh, explain that. The so when we went to see tech review, um, they had suggested because our our trash has to be secure. Uh, due to CCC regulations. And so if you look on the the um, the interior plans towards the back loading area, there's a, a waste closet. There's gonna be two receptacles in there, uh, one for recycles and one for trash. And our trash, even our trash closet is basically locked and secure. And the trash itself has a lock on it. So any trash that we have has to be secured and we have a contract with a, a trash company to come by and when they come, they're gonna notify us that they're coming and the trash is gonna be taken out with uh, a manager and we're gonna physically watch the trash go into the, the truck. And, and, we, and it's also on camera because it's from the, the uh, you can see it from the outside from the cameras and Basically, so we had talked about that at the uh, tech review meeting and the question came up, well, why do you even have a dumpster? And I said, well, you know, maybe it would make more sense if we push the parking spots up a few more feet to give a little bit more room for that door. And we can also add some green space in there. So if you look at the, um, the site plan that I had put up on the screen, let me see if I can put that up again here for you. that come up yeah. yep okay uh yeah so basically we're going to add a little bit more green space we moved the parking spaces over and you know tech review agreed i mean we don't need a dumpster and you know the product everything needs to be secure every, anyway uh so that gives us a little bit more green space on the back and it also opens up where the door here is not congested as it shows in the um, the original site plan that we had. What's up? Yep. Good. Any other questions from the board? Everybody's good? I'm gonna close that portion of here. I'm gonna open it up for public discussion. Is there anyone that wants to speak in favor? Yes, Amar, Amar, Amar Reed, I would like to say something. Okay. Go so right I've been ahead. a resident of, I've been a Brockton since 2000. Um, I've been here for a very long time. I'm actually a business owner myself. I'm trying to start a business in Brockton. I actually do live on the north side of Brockton, right next to this location that we talk about. Uh, so if I'm, I am, a, I suffer from PTSD. Uh, anxiety, um, and I suffer from asthma, chronic asthma, sorry, it's right here. So if I need to get any medical marijuana, I have a medical license, I would have to go to the south side of Brockton or the new location that is right in central Brockton. What about the side where if I can't get out my house or if I need to go somewhere closer, this location is right next to my house. So this benefits me to allow me to to heal my 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 uh, medical conditions that I'm going through. So I think that this is a great location. I think this is great for Brockton. Uh, this will increase the revenue for the city, which we need. Um, and I just and I, I've been uh, I went to Brockton High and I graduated with Ian Woods, and he's a great guy. And I believe that his mission and, and this that he wants to bring to Brockton is an awesome idea. That's okay, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wants to speak in favor? Yes, I, I would. Did. Jasmine Davids. What is it again? Jasmine Davids. 
Spell the last name, please. D-A-V-I-D-S. Got it. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, I am in favor of this being opened on Montel Street. Um, I'm a great friend of Ian, and I've been a part of the journey for the time being. And I believe that um, economically will be a great move for the city. I also believe that um, as somebody that uses marijuana for health benefits, I think it's a very big step for us to grow as a community. Very good. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else that wants to speak in favor? Yes, uh, my name is Joshua Rice. I'm in favor and support of uh, Tadis, uh, Tadis, uh, uh Company, uh, the weed dispensary coming. And I'm interested in um, looking forward uh, to you guys uh, opening up and making it happen for us in the city. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else that wants to speak in favor? Yes, hello, my name is Shamal Brathway. Last name, please. Brathway. Spell it, B please. Yeah, sure. B R A T H W A I T E. Jamal Brathway. Got it. Thank you. And I would like to endorse, uh, positively endorse, and welcome this uh, business to Brockton Terrasol LLC. Um, I think that this would be good for the city. It will increase our tax base, which we need. And also Terrasol LLC, the members who are managing it, uh, they're just competent, capable people, and they've done their homework, their research, I've seen their application, and I think uh, I'd like to see them move forward with this opportunity. Very good. Thank you very much. Anyone else? One more. Hi, yes, I'd like to speak in behalf of this. Okay, could you give us your name, please? Hi, my name is Kate. My last name is Bert, B-U-R-T. And I just, um, I'm in favor of this motion going forward because I think it would be great uh, for the city of Brockton. Sorry about that. Um, I think it would be something um, nice and local and um, I just all my support, I would go towards it. Very good, thank you very much. That it? Thank you. I have one to read into the record, Mr. Chair. I'm gonna read one into the record. I'm read one into the record. From Mary Walker, From Mary Walker 13 Ames Street. 13 Ames Street. I am in support of this neighborhood business. I need to be able to walk to this place. That's it. Okay, I have several documents that I'm going to quickly read here uh, relative to this petition. Uh, yes, City of Brockton Zoning Board. I, Gene Texera, a resident of Brockton for over 30 years and in support of Terrasol application open retail marijuana license at 702 North Montello Street. It's a socially responsible business that seeks to increase access for minority residents of Brockton to obtain economic opportunities in the legal commercialization of marijuana. Invest back into Brockton community needs such as efforts to increase access to quality education, housing and park recreational initiatives for our youth. And increase Brockton's revenue tax base to fund public services such as our public education, roadway construction, community civic activities and the public safety. For these reasons, I strongly encourage the Zoning Board of Appeals to approve Terrasol retail marijuana application to increase opportunities for all Brockton residents. The next one uh, from Mr. David Fox from North Montello Street. I am writing to support the proposal of Terrasol LLC retail store down the street from my house. I walk past their weekdays and when I take the train to and from work, and it would be nice to be able to stop and get some legal product. At the local meeting, we were told that there would be a way to purchase online, and I would like to be able to do that. Any questions, please call or write. The next one is from Mr. Ray Henningsen, uh, a Ward 7 resident. I wanted to show my support for the proposed retail marijuana shop located at 702 North Montello Street. This would be a great location and is needed tax generating business. Please consider a favorable vote. Thank you. And the last one, uh, I am writing uh, from a Kate Burt. I am writing in favor of the marijuana shop at North Montello on Ames Street. I think it would be a great addition to the east side of this wonderful community. Thank you. 
Okay. I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. And now, is there anyone here that wants to speak in opposition? Chair, I have none. I do have one additional four comments. Okay, so we have none in opposition. Correct. All right, I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. Temporarily, I'm going to reopen the in favor. I, apparently, we have one that has come in. If you could read that for us, please. All right, from Andy. I am in a butter. I think that this would be good for our neighborhood. I'm a commuter and I do not drive. So I would like to be able to walk to the neighborhood. The name's actually George Morris of 635 North Main Street, Brockton. Okay, in favor. Thank you very in much. Favor. All right, now, is there any elected officials that would like to speak on the issue? Seeing none, I'm gonna close that portion of the hearing and now I am going to open it up for a discussion from the board. Uh, deliberations of the board. Any comments from the board? Mr. Pina. Uh, when, I, when I first looked at this application, I don't know if I can do it. When I first looked at this application, when I first looked at this application, I was, I was, concerned, concerned, about location, I was, I was, I was a little concerned, number one, about the location uh, and proximity to Trinity Catholic. Uh, there's a big echo. We can't hear. My concerns there uh, with the distance and uh, the the part of the walls. And uh, am I you're not hearing? Can you hear? Okay. Of all the locations we've approved, this this one is. Uh, by far the smallest. And I, I think it, it's the response, you, you did mention this, it's the responsibility of the business owner to make sure that the parking runs smoothly. There is no on street parking in the area. And um, again, if if people find a problem with parking, they're gonna go somewhere else and there will be competition in the city. So um, I, I'm pretty comfortable that the owners will make sure the parking is not a problem. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay, very good. I will say also that I mentioned uh, the hours of operation uh, by ordinance is restricted from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, in the past, we have put stipulations that that shall be adhered to. Does the board still feel the same way? I, they didn't ask for anything beyond that. So I think as a stipulation, if this is granted, that we as a board voted to maintain uh, the hours of eight to eight. If for any reason those were to be changed, they would have to come back before the board. And quite honestly, I think he did a very good presentation and uh, an awful lot of what's going to be in this uh, as far as security and all that. He gave us a very good overview of that and the particulars of it are obviously gonna be regulated by the state. So I, I think what the responsibility is of us as far as granting a special permit uh, I made a list of all the highlights that I thought we needed to hit, and he hit every one of them. So personally, I feel comfortable that uh, all of our concerns from the board have been met. We are not the final arbiter here of this. I'm sure you realize that. This, we are just one more step in the whole process. And our job here as the Zoning Board of Appeals is to take a look at this location and express our concern whether or not we feel as though it fits in that location relative to parking and traffic and uh, the, the well being of the neighborhood. So, beyond that, you still got a number of steps to go. You realize that? Yes. Okay, good. All right. If there is nothing else, I think we. Oh. Uh, motion to grant. Okay, we have a motion to grant from Mr. Pina. Somebody want to second that? 
Okay, Steve, you have seconded. So we have a motion made and seconded to grant with the stipulation of the hours. Uh, would the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Pina. Yes. Chief Williams. Yes. Mr. Lanus. Yes. Mr. Bernard. Yes. Chairman Galligan. Yes. Mr. Chair, that's a five and oh, five to nothing and affirmative. Okay, five votes in the affirmative, none in the negative. The petition is granted. Good luck, guys. Thank you very much for your time. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thank you. All right, before we conclude tonight, I just want to make sure that anybody who may be watching that has an interest in any of the cases tonight, the three of these cases were postponed tonight and they most likely will be scheduled for September. So for anybody that's listening in, petition 2056, which is the apartment complex at 135 Elliott Street, that was not heard tonight. It is scheduled for next month. The petition for Robert Jordan uh, for 555 Plain Street, that was not heard tonight. It will not be heard tonight. It'll be scheduled for next month. And petition 2060, the petition of Brad Cartwright for 609 and 627 Pleasant Street was not heard tonight and it will not be heard tonight. It is postponed and scheduled for next month. So that concludes our meeting tonight. And uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. We are adjourned.